If you're curious to hear a little music from our guest Carla Lucero, who we spoke to in our most recent episode, check out E4TT's annual concert of music by women and non-binary composers, Midnight Serenades, on January 25th. Welcome to For Good Measure, an interview series celebrating diverse composers and other creative artists, sponsored by a grant from the California Arts Council. I'm Nanette McGinnis, Artistic Executive Director of Ensemble for These Times. In this week's episode, we continue our Da Capo Conversations, a mini-series where we'll be giving familiar segments a topical twist. Today we revisit Monica Chu's and Valerie Liu's perspectives on their paths to becoming a composer. Here's what Monica Chu had to say. During high school, I wanted to go to music school when I graduated. And because of lack of funding from my parents, I just decided (laughs) to go to the only undergraduate school that gave me a full ride, which was the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And uh, fortunately for me, I found a really wonderful piano teacher there. And um, I was able to simultaneously do a computer science degree. So that's how that happened in undergrad. And um, it was, it's fun. I mean, it's fun to make things. I like to to make anything really. So making music, making um, tools, making software. Um, Yeah, so I think they're both very friendly fields for creatives. I haven't been composing for really very long, uh, just less than five years. I think it's been four years. Um, The reason I started composing was actually pretty typical of the hubris that a lot of engineers exhibit, which is that they think they can do anything. Like, how hard could it be, right? And so um, I had this thought that maybe I could write some music. And um, nobody really discouraged me. So I just decided to do it and I did it and it probably wasn't very good, but, um, you know, it was a lot of fun. And um, my first composition project was actually a song cycle that I wrote for my friend, who you know, Jamie Lee. And we did it, we did it together. And that was part of what made it really fun is working with a friend. And, um, you know, I, what I learned about composing over the past couple of years is that it's really important to me to be able to provide music for other players, um, that they, they enjoy playing and it fulfills a need for them. Here's what Valerie Liu had to say. Uh, growing up in an Asian family, um, my parents desire us to be a doctor, a nurse, or a lawyer, <laughs> engineer, when we choose our profession. Um, their strong influence definitely played a part. My brother used to study engineering, and I studied nursing. But eventually, we both changed our career path. <laughs> uh, I study music privately was encouraged, but not formally. Uh, From their perspective, uh, they think formally it it was something you should not do. It was greatly discouraged because of its uncertainty in the job field and its income unstableness. So it's actually kind of funny because when I started studying music formally, I was doing it secretly while still working as a nurse. I didn't want to start a war at home and (laughs) I wasn't ready to tell them because I know very soon I need to quit nursing completely so that I can focus 100% on my music study. I also know sometimes you can tell others prematurely about your plan because they can stop it and tell you you can do it. So when I finally told them, it wasn't a pleasant time. uh, But at that time, I was mentally prepared to stand by my decision. 
I already got accepted to an excellent grad school. I was about to quit nursing. I was certain this is something I want to do. Um, so to me, being an, an Asian American woman, you're expected to listen to your parents or relatives that are older than you. It does feel like that whenever I want to make major changes, it takes so much convincing to get, get their approval. And it's crazy that I've seen their approval so desperately. It took me a while to realize that it is okay not to get their approval. Um, what's that saying that uh, like they're older, they have more life experiences, they are wiser. But I think that sometimes our experiences can offer, well, it can offer great insights, but it can also limit us. Where if we have negative experiences in the past, it can instill fear in us so strongly that we would just dream of something and but won't proceed to make it a reality. Not to discredit those who have more experiences, but I think that what you're destined to do is more important than your past experiences. In my opinion, your purpose outweighs everything. Um, the danger is to settle the next best thing, but not the best thing in life. Uh, leaving nursing a uh, familiar territory and entering a new territory is actually very scary for me. Uh, it's a bit uncomfortable at times. Uh, Pursuing something new and something so different, um, it, is, it is very exciting. However, um, when I decided to change my career, I did feel a strong calling into the music field. At the same time, something else happened in my personal life, sort of gave a further push. My dad just passed away. It was mm. a dark time for me. Um, I didn't have a good relationship with my father. I was hoping to improve the situation sometime in my lifetime, but it was too late. He passed mm -hmm. away before I had a chance to do that. I wish I had done more, put more effort and sooner than late. My, my father had a tough life, but he loved his job. He was a writer, a journalist. He lights up every time he talks about his work. I want to be like that, you know, doing something you love. Uh, music is what I love. And I think my father is guiding me somehow as a mentor, mm. looking and remembering the way he immersed so deeply in his work, gave me the courage to head towards a new direction. Thank you for listening to Four Good Measures to Capo Conversations, and a special thank you to our guests for joining us today. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to our podcast by clicking on the subscribe button and support us by sharing it with your friends, posting about it on social media, and leaving us a rating and a review. To learn more about E4TT, our concert season online and in the Bay Area, or to make a tax-deductible donation, please visit us at www.e4tt.org. This podcast is made possible in part by a grant from the California Arts Council and generous donors like you. Four Good Measures produced by Nanette McGinnis and Ensemble for These Times and designed by Brennan Stokes, with special thanks to co-producer and audio engineer Stephanie M. Newman. Remember to keep supporting equity in the arts and tune in next week for good measure.